You didn't see Harry jumping up and down. You could see him. He was clear over there. You could see him over top of the fence. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. All I seen was a radio up to his mouth. And How was the track tonight? <laughs> well, <laughs> <question is that? laughs> I guess for what we had to work with, it was pretty good. Except to the last one down there, then the chicken feeders was out then. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of Southside Speedway Illustrated. It rained earlier today and there's still a threat, but we're going to try to get the racing action in for you tonight. Got some great stuff, go we'll talk to a couple of drivers who've come back here for the first time in 1996. Scott Willingham's back and Fred Talley's back in car number 87, the one vacated by Bobby Curtis. But one man who's been talking to me on the past few weeks while we were off, Johnny, you said there's been a lot of wine out here, so you brought cheese with you. Yeah, my, my crew's getting pretty heavy into it. They, uh, we've been hearing a lot of crap about me having a lot of experience and... The car and the crew and everybody that works on it and all the people that work on the motor weren't getting any credit, so they figured if everybody's going to whine, they're going to bring them some cheese to go with it. Now, let's face it, the one thing probably keeping you out of the late models is the money. The mo yeah, it's definitely the money. If we had a sponsor, I mean, we'd be there right now. It's Everybody's tried it. There's been a lot of them tried it. We ran it before, and we did real well with it, but it's, it just costs too much to do it without some help. If there's anybody out there that needs somebody to drive a late model, I'd be willing to give it a shot. Now, what's, what's the cost difference week per week in grand stock compared to late model? Well, you have to buy new tires every week for late model. If it wasn't for that, we'd be running late model at 450 a week. I mean, as opposed to with the grand stocks, I run seven and eight races on a set of tires. And you just can't, there's no comparison. That's the biggest thing. Well, that's John Eversall. We're going to watch him in the action tonight. He'll be driving car number 98 in the grand stocks. As for us, we'll be back after this commercial with this week's show. Well, welcome back, everyone. John Eversall's finally found somebody in the Grand Stock Pits that likes him. Fred Talley, you've uh, taken over the ride vacated by Bobby Curtis. Well, I don't know if I like John or not. We used to be called <laughs> idiot twins, and I thought he was the bigger idiot. Now we're just dumb and dumber, and Kenny's the dumbest for letting me back in the car. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if I lose him tonight, if I bump him, and I lost my only friend out here. Your only friend? Yeah, Come on, that's friend. better than well, that, Eddie. I got Donnie Gerard with me tonight, so that's pretty good help. So, Donnie's a good guy, and I appreciate Kenny letting me drive his car. And, it's fun to be back out. It's fun seeing all y'all guys and seeing the idiot. Now, Johnny told me that uh, you were most fast as him in practice the other night. Well, I almost was, but, you know, it's, we're still missing just a little bit. We'll tick off, and we're going to get him. We, we'll we get him some kind of way. I mean, it's just a matter of time. If we stay in the car long enough, we'll get him. Now, what was the reason for Bobby leaving the ride? Well, Bobby didn't leave the ride. Bobby just kind of got down for a little bit, and I got in. I think Bobby's a little tired of it, and I don't know. We're just all having fun. Bobby's a great driver. I mean, everybody knows Bobby Curtis is one heck of a driver, and he can do anything with a car that we could do. But John's been talking to Kenny, and Bobby wanted to sit out a little bit. And I've been racing go-karts too long, and I said, well, i got to come out here and drive something with a little bit of power again. And it's great to be back. Well, we'll look forward to him. He's driving car number 87 in the Grand Stocks. Well, 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 moving from Grand Stocks into late models, and look who's back, back in the saddle, Scott Willingham. It's good to have you back at the old short track. Hey, Freddie, it's good to be back. Hey, Vaughn, how you doing? Good to see you. Now, nah, we're, we're back. Uh, we did a little work on the car over the winter. I guess back now everybody knows we lost our big sponsorship, so we're running on a limited budget. We're kind of like uh, out here trying to do the best we can, try to get somebody's attention, you know, wants to sponsor a good forward for next year and put something together good for next season. Well, we'll see you. You do have at least Lacey Auto Parts on the hood and a couple other sponsors on here, but I haven't even seen you roaming around the pits or anything lately. you just just missing all together, and then all of a sudden you show up. Hey, I'm one of them guys that if I can't be running, I don't even want to be here. I'd rather, I'd rather be at home and not even think about it. If, if you can't be out here in the car, it just ain't the same. Well, you've been back for a few hours. Anything changed? Yeah, it's still South Side Speedway. It's tough to get around. Uh, Greg Deeth has been over there working with us a little bit. I mean, i got to thank him. He, he, he's helped us out a ton over the years. And, you know, he's had to yell at me a few times. I think uh, I picked up just by not changing the car, but just having him yell at me after practice, I picked up two tenths from that till qualifying. So, hey, we're doing pretty good. 
Well, it's good to have him back. Watch for this. Car number 22, Scott Willingham tonight in the late models. Here's a driver that's made a few runs out here, Chris Steffi. Now, Chris, we tend to listen to some of the drivers on the scanners, and I notice these guys are coaching you. A lot of accents in some of their coaching. And I notice just about every week you're feeling pretty bad in the car, like this car makes you sick when you climb in it. What is it? <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, being a rookie, I guess. Uh, we just start night trying to learn, trying to stay out of trouble and keep out of everybody's way. Well, you've done a pretty good job of that. I notice yeah. you run clean. You'll get you a good line. The guys yeah. talk to you when you run a good line. How about some of the other tracks? Ventured anywhere else? Uh, we ran Myrtle Beach once last year, and we ran uh, New River two weeks ago. Uh, broke something in the rear, fell out, but we're learning. Well, they say if you can master Southside, you can master just about any speedway. That's what they say. So that's why we're that's why we're running out here every week, trying to get this down. I see you got a few new decals on the machine in the last couple of weeks. That's pretty good for a rookie. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's our own company. So, <laughs> but uh, Steffi Enterprises, it's a trucking company, a contract carrier, and uh, the WDS company is a warehousing company. And we do warehousing around town and all that. But uh, we're still looking for sponsors. Uh, anybody out there? So. Looking for all you can, right? Right. <laughs> Anything and everything. How about who's the toughest out here, you think, or who has helped you anyway? Uh, the Bugs has helped. Uh, Ricky and uh, Eddie Johnson have helped a lot. Uh, Ricky knows my crew chief, Don Rollins, real well, and he's helped out a, a ton uh, with, with everything. And uh, uh, everybody's been real friendly, and uh, Linda, Linda Hand. The Urbans down there, they uh real friendly and help out a lot. Well, you know they're all friendly to you get up there with them. I know. <laughs> Chris Steffi, we'll keep an eye on him this year. In 1996, he drives car number 19. Well, moving from Chris Steffi, another driver we're happy to see back. Lenny, good to see you. First of all, has the health. After that last top five, you got so excited you had to clam into the ambulance after it was over. Yeah, well, I'm doing fine. They, they turned me loose, said everything was okay. I just had to take it easy for a few, few days, a few weeks, rather. What was the exact words on it? Was it a was it a mild stroke or just a heat exhaustion? No, they said I had a slow, mild heart attack, a slight heart attack. They just call it a heart attack. They don't call it slight. Now I was listening to John Deck up there. They, they were kind of uh, strange to see you back. Uh, said that some of you guys are just a little hard-headed, sometimes hard to get along with, and sometimes you just you just a little uh, too physical out there. Well, if you wasn't hard-headed, you wouldn't be racing. So you know, I guess he's right. <laughs> How about can you do another top five tonight? Well, we hope so. We started a little better than we did last time, so, you know, hopefully maybe we can do better. We just have to wait and see. Well, we've seen Lynn O'Neill out here practicing a little bit for you, getting it dialed in. Does that help? Yeah, we, we found a couple of things in the boot, the car, and, and I think it helped me probably because I got to see the car going through the turn and everything. I had never seen it before because I'd always been in it. It just looked like we picked up a couple of little, little things that helped the car a little bit, and uh, then we came back to run. Of course, last week it ran and we came back today. We probably ran as good or a little bit quicker than we ever had with the car, and the times are 1,500 to two tenths off tonight for some reason. So, you know, I think we hope improved it very much. We'll watch for him tonight, driving car number three. That's Lenny Pond, one of the most famous faces here at Southside. We're going to take a break. When we come back, it's Fan Facts. Let's go to Dean Johnson, or as Yvonne calls him, Glasshopper, up in the stands with today's Fan Facts. Thanks, Freddie. This is Dean Johnson. What's your name? Neil Hounshaw. Who's your favorite late model driver out here at Southside Speedway? There's only one driver ever saw. Do you have any questions to ask, John? And the O1 machine accepted the challenge. Ever saw? Are you really running legal? How about it, John? Are you legal? Well, Neil, the answer to that question is absolutely maybe not. I, I can't tell because if I told everybody out here would know. They haven't been able to find anything yet, so obviously we must be. Well, welcome to this week's Tower Talk with Gary Fox. I'm Freddie Clark, and I'm going to introduce this guy. A lot of times there's questions from the stands, questions from the drivers. 
about what happens in the tower. Well, Gary Fox is going to explain one thing to us tonight, how the scoring goes. One of the things that people always wonder about is how we score a race. Richard Petty has been known to say that um, you run 500 miles, when the race is over, you get out of the car and NASCAR tells you where you finish. Well, let me take just a second to explain how it's done here at Southside Speedway. We have a sheet here and we have like a 25 lap race that's getting ready to start. For all, every lap as the cars come by, we write the car numbers down for every single lap as they come by. When we go to a caution, we go back to the last completed lap. As the cars are lapped, each lap, we circle that lap car. So at the end of the rundown, at the end of a 25 lap race, like the Charger race is getting ready to start, we have a complete rundown of where every car was every lap during the race, and we know exactly where they finish, and we're running on every lap. We have extended distance races of over 100 laps, like in the late models. We have individual scorers who use a scorecard. There's a clock that sits behind the flagman on the flag stand that ticks off the seconds. The individual scores write down the times for each one of those cars as they come by. At the end of the night, we collect those scorecards and compare them, and we can tell where every car was at any time during the race. And that's how scoring is done here at Southside Speedway. Next week, we'll be back, and we'll talk about other issues. That's Gary Fox, and it's time for the racing action. Straight to the Charger highlights and tonight's highlights, brought to you by Highland Springs Transmission and Air Conditioning Repair. Mike Greathouse and Cliff McDaniel took the field of 19 Chargers to the green with Greathouse securing the early lead. Dean Leslie would take an early black flag for a broken hood that was blocking his view. At the same time, Brad Skelding, who was running third, fell off the pace. On the track, Irvin Bell in car 17 and Wayne Bordoni in car 69 were continually trading paint as they fought for position. Up front, Mike Greathouse was in clear control of the event and with each lap was chopping away at Skelding's point lead. Second place runner McDaniel's luck was going bad as he tangled with the, uh, the lap car of Mike Rudy. That put the field under the caution with three laps remaining. Great House showed the way to the finish with Tommy Tatum taking second over Kevin Minner and Robert Connor. Well, no, actually, I didn't know he fell out. I mean, I looked up at the scoreboard and I didn't see his number up there. So I, I figured kind of something was wrong. And I seen after the first caution, I went down a back stretch and I see him in the see him in here in the pit. So. Uh, yeah, I guess I picked up a couple points. You mean you didn't see Harry jumping up and down? You could see him. He was clear over there. You could see him over top of the fence. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. All I seen was a radio up to his mouth and what he was doing. I don't know. <laughs> Michael Greathouse, he takes the win and tonight's Charger event. 19 cars set ready for an extended 50-lap Grand Stock feature. John Eversall set on the pole coming into the event with a 108-point advantage over second place Wayne Clark. Outside pole setter Roy Carter Jr. fought Eversall hard for the first circuit but finally gave in. The first caution came on lap two with four, as fourth place points contender Chad Mason, Wayne Clark, Dave Lingerfeld, and Bill McGonigal all connected in turn four. Eversall took the field back to green with Carter and Bubba Hubbard holding second and third. Freddie Talley was having a strong run early as he held the four spot. Glenn Jarman was trying to work his way onto the leaderboard as he went to the inside on Mike Tomlin. Mason was trying to get back to the front and was getting aggressive with Carl Salvatore. But Salvatore returned the favor and turns three and four, leaving Mason in the infield dirt. On lap 17, the leader, Eversall, shot high and fell off the pace, handing the lead to Carter, who was showing smoke in the turns as he let out the throttle. Simple signs of an internal engine problem, but it didn't seem to slow the leader. Caution would fly again on lap 29 as Mason again looped his ride. Carter would have the buffer in the form of Carl Salvatore as the green returned. Tally would go to work on Hubbard for second spot, but Hubbard used Salvatore as a pick to hold the position. Tally would suffer problems two laps later and took his ride into the pits. On the next circuit, Hubbard caught Carter and made a hard run through turns three and four to take the lead on the front stretch. The smoke from Carter obviously was a sign of problems as his ride let out a loud boom on the front stretch on lap 37 and then started to broadside. Salvatore got caught in the fluid and slid into Carter. Carter started to climb from his ride as his ride started to roll down the banking. Hubbard would now lead with 13 laps remaining. Robbie Langford had made his way into second after all the chaos, but needed to work his way around the lap traffic before he could challenge Hubbard. Langford cleared the traffic with five laps remaining and Hubbard three car lengths ahead. Hubbard held the lead to the finish with Langford second, Jarman third, and Clark fourth.
Bubba, I looked at you a little early. I said, quit looking so distraught. And you said, I'll see you a little later. And sure enough, you did. Yeah, I tell you, it turned out a little different than I thought. But I just got to thank um, Rodney Goodman up at Stock Car Products and all these guys for helping us get the car back together where we bent it up. Leon Wheatley brought us through our motor problems. And, I, you know, I don't know what to say. I'm happy to win again. And what happened with Roy? I saw the smoke developing early on the car. And it seemed like uh, you were riding. And as soon as you got a chance to go around him, you wanted to get by him. I, he seemed like he was real tight and pushing up in the turn, so I was just kind of sitting there until he slipped good enough where I could run by him without having to race him hard. And that's what happened. Bubba Hubbard picks up win number five. He's about eighth in the point standings after tonight's event. Robbie, a strong run. You took second. You made it through all that chaos up there. <laughs> yeah, chaos. We did a little field racing and all kinds of stuff. I tell you, to come from ninth to second, I mean, a lot of calls fell out, but, hey, you got to take it out. You can get it. There have been rumors you were going to leave, rumors you were going to sell the car, but you're still here. It's for sale. It's for sale right now. You ready to get out? I'm ready. <laughs> Come on, Robbie. How was the track tonight? <laughs> well, the question is that. <laughs> I guess for what we had to work with, it was pretty good. Except to the last one down there, then. The chicken feeders was out then. It was all <laughs> over. It stayed dry. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, we can't tell. You know, we got lucky. I noticed you tried to make one last run at Bubba, and you slipped a little bit down in that stay drive. Yeah. I tried to go in real low, and we had ran, and when we was drying it up, we should have ran a little bit lower, and right rear, left rear got in a little bit of stay dry, and Bubba won, but that's no excuse. He won. He was up front tonight. He ran up front the whole race. That's why he won. All right, Glenn. You come home third tonight. You ran across track. You taking some of them illegal parts back over there. We heard that happen a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to get a wrench. Get these spark plugs out. I don't know what they're checking. But while we survived a uh, caution field afternoon, I tell you, I'm getting a little age on me, and it about, I about had heat exhaustion that day. It was mighty hot, but it's, it's still fun, all well worth it. We talked to Robbie about the track. Uh, not in too good a shape tonight. No, not after that big wreck down in number one and two. It was all water and stay dry everywhere. It was very slippery out there. Well, the heat made it slippery all day, but that really made it bad. Well, even with limited sponsorship, you seem to be coming on here towards the end of the season. Yeah, we've been running real well, and uh, it's a lot of fun, and I just hope to keep it up. Well, Wayne, yeah. working on the car. <laughs> Are you tired, Wayne? Man, that's the longest 50 laps I ever tried to run out there. It got kind of wild there too early on. Well, it did, and we, we got in a little incident over here. I really don't know what happened. The 18 car was there, and I don't know if he checked up to hit, you know, to miss somebody or something. I just accidentally attacked him, and we both went around. But uh, we had to come from the back, and uh, there was a lot of excitement out that night. But we came back, finished fourth, and uh, I believe we're still holding on a second in the points. So we're going it week by week, and uh, we'll see what happens. Morrison Urban took the field to green for 100 laps of late model action. The top two went wheel to wheel with Kevin Grubb and Eddie Johnson in tight pursuit just behind. Urban finally secured the lead on lap five as Grubb went to the high side against Morris. Further back, it was Shane Lockhart and Roy Hendricks door to door for six spot, which Lockhart won on circuit number 12. Grubb and Johnson finally cleared Morris with Johnson starting to work over the rear deck of Grubb. The action settled down on lap 22 as caution fell for Jim Thacker and David Goad. The caution allowed Wayne Grubb to come in for driver change. Grubb was celebrating his birthday, with, but was also suffering from mouth surgery. David Blankenship would finish the race for Grubb, who was second in points. Urban took the field back to green. Again, it was Johnson assaulting the rear bumper of Grubb. On lap 28, Johnson worked off turn two, going inside of Grubb. The two would run side by side for two circuits as Urban continued to pull away. But two laps later, Urban would slow and head for pits as Johnson took the point. Bugs Harefield finally started to make his move through the field. On lap 46, Harefield worked by Mike Lee for seventh and then set out after Hendricks in sixth. Blankenship was having his hands full dealing with traffic behind the wheel of Wayne Grubb's Pontiac. Shane Lockhart had been working on Rodney Esty since the initial green and finally made the pass for fourth spot on lap 73. Harefield followed through for fifth. With 22 laps remaining, it would be Johnson, Grubb, Moores, Lockhart, and Harefield. A quick caution tightened the field, and on the restart, Johnson broke, handing the lead to Grubb, with Morris holding second over Lockhart. With 15 laps remaining, Harefield made his way by Lockhart and headed for the top two. Grubb was leaving the inside lane open, and Morris was trying to get through while Harefield watched ahead. Grubb held strong as Harefield started to rattle Morris's cage. 
The second and third place battle allowed Grubb to pull away for the final circuits. Grubb would take the second checkered in his first Southside victory over Morris, Harefield, and Lockhart. Yeah, it's, it means a lot more to me because this is where I started and this is where I always plan to run. And it's it, we, we had a good car and, you know, everybody run me clean and just it was a combination of everything. It was just a good night. And thanks to Bullet, Bullets and Peterbilt Trucks and just everybody made it possible. Why were you running the high line there in the last few laps, trying to cool the tires down in case you needed a last run? No, actually the car was tight and it, went, it kept on trying to push up to the top, so I just went ahead and ran up there. And I know I could run just as fast on the top and it'd be hard for them to get by me, so that's just that's where I chose to run. Well, tonight Wayne Grubb celebrated a birthday. Kevin Grubb celebrates a win in victory lane. Well, Eddie, it looked like it was all yours and on that restart something went away. What was it? Well, it kind of shifted into gears there and I don't know whether it was a clutch of the transmission but something broke you know you got a hundred thousand things on these cars that can break at any time and you know fate takes its course we have some awful good luck so we got a smile on the bad luck and come back next week and come strong. How was the track for the late models tonight? Pretty rough for everyone else. Well it, the track's a little greasy it's been a little greasy all night long and that has to do with all the rain and the weather and the rain today and just when you get a little bit of water mixed in with a little bit of the tire rubber it just doesn't doesn't stick that good, but Eric WRVA, Ash and Ford, Swisher Hygiene, Thunderbird was running real good, and you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda, but hey, you know, my hats off to the to the Grubs. They've been running real good, and knocking on the door, and you got to be there to take opportunity, and they were there. Uh, Bugs, were you trying to rattle Billy's cage just a little bit? We know you've been helping young Kevin. No, no, I won't try to rattle it at all. I, I had a good car, and I, I had a good chance of winning, and I come off a of turn four right there up on the outside of him, and. I got to the left front up, I was right rear wheel, and they come up the track and pinched me off. I had to back out of it to keep from turning him into the fence. So I went down in the car, and I run in the back of him, turned him sideways. I wouldn't go spin him out, but I just let him know that, you know, you need to watch both ends. And it, like I told him, uh, in this division at this time, he's a, he's a rookie, and I'm not doing it to cr criticize him at all. But he, he had a foot, good car, and he was up. He was trying to win the race, and he was looking out front without looking at the back. And when you're in them situations, you got to look at both ends. And Mark Schools and Brett Hamilton inherited the front row after pole winner Danny Wyatt drew an eight-car invert for the modified feature. But instead of me telling you about it, how about some music, Yvonne, as we watch Modified Madness at Southside Speedway. Folks, let's go wrap up the racing action for tonight, and it was a great night indeed. First time winner Kevin Grubb, great action in the Modifieds, Chargers, all the divisions out here at Southside Speedway. As for the Mid-Atlantic Modified Series, their next event, August 3rd at Langley Speedway, MassCar will be here next Saturday night for racing action. Be sure you come on out for that. And Southern National Speedway, always Saturday night action down there at that tough 4 tenths mile oval. On behalf of Yvonne Alzo, Mark Potter, and our new buddy Dean Johnson, I'm Freddie Clark saying see you next week on Southside Speedway Illustrated.